Hello, Andrea. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. I just want to say how much I admire your leadership and advocacy of open space and inner city parks. Thanks a lot, Richard. It's great to have you here. Uh, I know you have a few slides uh, prepared to show us, so just to get started, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to launch Save by Nature? Sure. You know, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, but raised in a low income community in South San Jose. And I unfortunately made some bad decisions early in life that put me on the wrong path. And it wasn't until I was introduced to fishing that my life began to turn around. And so when I woke up in the morning to escape the adversities of my neighborhood, I'd grab my fishing pole, drive to Coyote Creek Trail and walk along Coyote Creek, which led to Coyote Valley. And this is where I built an affinity for nature that would eventually be the gateway that led me to the Sierra Nevada. And that's why I call it the Valley of Hope. You know, it motivated me to return to school where I graduated with honors, receiving degrees in park management from West Valley College and environmental studies uh, from San Jose State University. And so, you know, my inspiration uh, to create Save by Nature came from knowing that only one to 1 1.2% of African-Americans and 3.8 to 6.7% of Latinx populations visit our public lands. And so Save by Nature is a direct response and solution to address a need for more people of color to visit and work in our parks, preserves, and forests, a need for multilingual materials and culturally relevant programming, as well as a need to increase allyship by people who, who do not identify as Black Indigenous people of color. Well, thank you for sharing that perspective. And uh, it's just amazing to hear your personal story of how nature's had such an impact in, in your life and really turned your life around. So appreciate your honesty and, and sharing that with us. So you mentioned Coyote Valley and, and let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Can you share what your hopes are for the future of this landscape? You know, well, you know, being one of the last existing wild areas in our valley and its proximity to San Jose, my hope is that we can preserve Coyote Valley so that we can teach our inner city populations about the natural world. Uh, the photos displayed are from last week's class at Coyote Valley Open Space Reserve. You know, we're utilizing the natural landscape to educate the students about habitats, animals, and other science-related topics. You can see one of our homeschoolers there in the photo with mountain lion prints. He cast them on his own. One of our mottos is, how do we expect people to care about something they know nothing about? So we're big on teaching our youth about nature. My hopes are also continued community awareness and that the nearly 2 million residents in Santa Clara County are aware of the importance of Coyote Valley's landscape. <clears throat> the photos displayed are from our monthly community hike. We teach the public about connectivity between the Diablo Range and Santa Cruz Mountain and how it increases animal genetic diversity and their resilience to disease. We teach people about where their drinking water comes from, sustainable agriculture, natural infrastructure. Well, Richard, uh, I'm just so thrilled that you're in this role and that you're introducing Coyote Valley and the, the benefits of nature to, to everybody in, in our community. And that's just so important um, moving forward. Um, well, speaking of that and getting people out and introducing them to nature, um, what ways do you find really important and helpful to connecting diverse populations in the Silicon Valley to nature? Um, and how can we ensure more people from underserved and under-resourced under areas have equal access to the benefits of nature? Well, you know, it seems I'm all full of mottos and quotes, but, um, <laughs> but another one of our mottos is, it's not just about connecting people to nature, it's about connecting nature to the people. So, uh, historically, people of color have been connected to, to the land from African-American sharecroppers to Mexican ranchos to Spanish missions to Chinese farmers. And it's important that we find cultural connections. Another way to connect is to give people a voice. So we ask the diverse uh, population we serve. Here you can see a survey from last month that shows that although our interpretive guiding could be a reason people are seeking nature, the top three reasons are exploring fitness and emotional support. And so the big question is, how can we ensure that, pe that people from underserved areas have equal opportunity to get outside and enjoy the many benefits of nature? Well, it's equity and inclusion. And I think I heard Nick say that. And Save by Nature's 
Uh, you know, we provide culturally relevant programs that are intentionally designed to address barriers so that we can connect underrepresented communities to their nearby natural surroundings. And here in the photo is our cultural competency project funded through the Urban Open Space Grant. We were able to, at no cost to the participants, to provide a Latinx at Promise Youth, two preparation hikes, one at Cowdy Valley and one at Mount Madonna, and also a one night backpacking trip at Henry Coast State Park. And so through our innovative and culturally relevant programs, many participants have seen wildlife, redwoods, explored natural areas, and camp for the very first time. And we're very proud of that. You know, in addition, consider creating a, vi a variety of programming unique to the community you serve. We have a diverse community, so your programming should be diverse. We provide free community nature hikes, hence free is important. Seniors hike for health events, summer camps for underserved youth, virtual nature for those living with disability, and opportunity for re-entering youth and adults. You know, furthermore, keep in mind your target audience and think out of the box. This is a mural we had created to culturally connect to the community that we serve. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, those slides are amazing. And I just think about the future environmental stewards who are going on those walks with you and you are literally changing lives through the work you're doing in Coyote Valley in the Coyote Valley Open Space Preserve. I especially love that uh, photo of youth wearing backpacks training in Coyote Valley. That's, that's amazing. So it, I don't know if you have any other uh, closing thoughts or messages about Coyote Valley or the upcoming master plan uh, that you want to share with our audience uh, before we wrap up today. Absolutely. I got about an hour of statements. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Coyote Valley is home to grasslands. If you didn't know, you know, wetlands, oak forests, chaparral, serpentinite, Vernell pools, and riparian corridor. My message is to get involved and that no idea is too small. Thanks, Charlotte. I have so many ideas, such as redirecting Fisher Creek into Laguna, Laguna Seca, which is our largest wetlands in our county, reintroducing the Roadrunner, meet me, or just placing benches under oak trees to provide shade for hikers instead of building structures. So considering contacting OSA and becoming a part of protecting this habitat so that everyone can reap its benefits for generations to come. Thanks. 